In this week's project, we're going to build a new camera ring light for your mobile phone. This 3D printed lighting rig is a great DIY build for your photo and video projects. It uses an Adafruit trinket and NeoPixel LEDs. It's also portable and battery powered, or you can just plug it into the wall. Your phone snaps onto the 3D printed bumper, making a great lighting solution for your front facing camera. In a previous project, we made a light ring for DSLR cameras using a 60 NeoPixel ring. This new version uses RGBW type NeoPixels, which produces much better lighting. Combining RGB colors together can create white light, but this just doesn't look too good on camera. RGBW type NeoPixels provide a dedicated white light, which produces much better color temperature. Here in the side-by-side -side comparison, you can clearly see the one on the left has much more natural tone, while the one on the right has a lot of magenta. This is because the RGB colors are separate from the white diode, which actually has a yellow phosphor. This produces a better color temperature, which is ideal for photography. By adding two NeoPixel sticks to a 60 NeoPixel ring set, we're able to make an over ring that can fit over the phone. The signal from the NeoPixels can flow between different PCBs as long as the data in goes to data out. Here's how the circuit works. We'll connect an Adafruit trinket to a LiPo backpack charging circuit for the battery. A slide switch will power the circuit on and off. For the battery, we'll use a 2500 milliamp LiPo. The data line from the pixels will connect to a GPIO pin on the Adafruit trinket along with power and ground. In the Arduino sketch, it's easy to add support for RGBW NeoPixels. In the NeoPixel object, all we need to do is change the NeoPixel type to NeoGRBW. Then in the loop, we can add a fourth color value in the color argument and zero out the RGB values. Here's how to attach the sticks to the quarter 60 rings. We'll use two sets of third helping hands to keep everything steady while we solder. Header pins will help bridge the connections between the pads. First, we'll need to tin the pads with solder and then slide a piece of header onto the pads. Let's see that again. Tin all of the pads with a bit of solder. Then keep the pad heated while placing the headers on top. You'll definitely want to use tweezers so you don't burn your fingers and this helps keep things sturdy. This makes the connections much stronger than just using solder. Data in should always flow into data out, so be sure they're oriented correctly. Make sure to leave the N unconnected because we'll need to attach wires to the first NeoPixel with data in. We'll need long wires to connect the NeoPixel ring to the Adafruit trinket. The foam bumper is integrated into the NeoPixel housing, but you could always just adjust the design if you want to use it for a specific device. A separate piece will hold the electronics and clip onto the body of the NeoPixel ring housing. The battery fits into a protective housing and it has a T-slot which slides into the electronics mounting clip. These parts were printed on a 0.06mm nozzle which actually reduces the total print time. The wiring from the NeoPixel threads through the hole in the housing. The NeoPixel stick has mounting holes so we can use machine screws to secure them to the housing. We'll mark mounting holes on the housing and then use a pro needle tool to poke through the plastic. Then we can insert and fasten M2 size screws to create threads. Now we can secure the PCB to the housing with machine screws. We did the same process for the LiPo backpack and the Adafruit trinket. We laid it out like this, marked the mounting holes, used a needle to create the holes, and made threads with the machine screws. Now we can measure out some wires to connect the LiPo backpack to the Adafruit trinket. We use pieces of flex PCB for connecting multiple wires to the power and ground pins on the Adafruit trinket. Use tweezers and third helping hands to keep the flex PCB steady while soldering. Then attach them to the power and ground pins on the Adafruit trinket. Now we can connect the wires to power, ground, and the USB pin. We'll need to cut this trace on the LiPo backpack to enable the on and off switch. Then tin all of the pins and connect the wires from the trinket to the LiPo backpack. Now we can wire up the slide switch and connect it to the LiPo backpack. We can then secure the PCBs to the clip by fastening screws into the mounting holes. The slide switch press fits into a little cavity and now we're ready to connect the NeoPixel ring. The mounting bracket fits over the bumper and clips onto the edges. 
Now we can connect the NeoPixels to the Adafruit Trinket. We'll need to thread the cable from the battery through the holder and then slide in the battery. The T-slot from the battery holder slides into the groove on the back of the housing. Now we can plug in the battery and tuck the cable underneath. This 3 8 to a quarter 20 thread insert will make it easy to mount this to any tripod accessory. This cover provides some soft diffusion and a bit of protection to the NeoPixels. This swivel head makes it easy to position the light upright so that we can attach it to a tripod or a selfie stick. Having the ring light directly attached to the phone itself has a lot of benefits. It gives you an untethered experience that lets you take it with you anywhere. But of course you don't need to have a camera phone attached to it because it works pretty well as just a light. So if you ever need really good lighting, RGBW LEDs are definitely worth checking out. I hope you found this project insightful and maybe even inspires you to DIY something of your own. Let us know what you think of this project in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the Adafruit channel for new videos every week.